that this merely human understanding of God's will is precisely what believers use to establish his goodness in the first place. This is Charles Ramsey. He has been incarcerated for drug abuse, criminal trespassing, receiving stolen property, and three separate domestic violence convictions. But Charles Ramsey is a good man, because on May 6, 2013, he helped rescue three women from a home in Cleveland, Ohio. Women who had been kidnapped and held against their will by this accused man, Ariel Castro, for almost 11 years. I say Charles is a good man because rescuing humans from abuse and bondage is generally acknowledged as an act of basic goodness. This is God, or at least a representation of him. He is omniscient. He knows everything. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. And we are told that God is good. In fact, every good and perfect gift comes from God we are told he is far more good, far more loving than we could ever hope to be. And this all-knowing, all-powerful, always present God was there in that basement when those girls were locked away over a decade ago and every night that followed. He watched as the accused Mr. Castro abused those poor girls again and again and again. And God did nothing. He stood idly by when the accused Mr. Castro allegedly impregnated one of his victims five times and caused the girl to miscarriage by repeatedly striking her in the stomach and starving her. Of course, God could have ended their torment at any time. Had he given the word, 10,000 angels could have torn that house apart, shielded those girls with their wings, and carried them away from that terrible place, back to their loved ones, back home. But this good God did not help. He did not answer their prayers nor heed their cries. It is said he spoke the heavens into existence within a single day, but he could not be bothered to lift a finger to help Amanda Berry, Georgina De Jesus, or Michelle Knight in their hour of need. So after almost 11 years of needless suffering, it took a convicted drug user and wife beater to do what was right, what was merciful, what was good. If it turns out that Charles Ramsey knew about the captive women but neglected to do anything to help them over the last few years, our hero would become an instant pariah. At best, he'd represent the deterioration of America's moral conscience. At worst, he would be guilty of criminal negligence and brought up on charges, and rightfully so. And yet, when God fails to intervene and prevent these horrific tragedies, despite clearly having the power to do so, his goodness is never called into question by those who follow him, even though defending the weak and the helpless is supposed to be an intrinsic part of his divine character. As Sam Harris said, human understanding of God's will is precisely what believers use to establish his goodness in the first place. So if ex-convicts will do what God will not, then how can God's goodness ever truly be established? And if Christians are willing to believe that their God is within his right to let tragedies occur, like the one in Cleveland, then the only conclusion I can come to is that, in some circumstances, kidnapping and rape are acceptable to God. If that is his idea of goodness, I don't want any part of it.